Hey everyone, hope you're all doing very well and welcome back to another video here on the channel. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the velocity constant. This is a value that you and I know very, very well and it's also known as the KV of a brushless motor. Now we're using the KV in order to determine the total amount of RPM that we can get out of a brushless motor based off of the voltage that we apply to that brushless motor. Now one might think because KV is termed the velocity constant that this value is quite constant. Well, you might be surprised to learn that a constant actually is not all that constant. Should have probably gave you a spoiler alert, but this is what the video and what we're gonna actually get into here in a little bit more detail. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna break it down into a couple components and make certain that we're actually identifying the true parameters that revolve around the brushless motor and we're not seeing some indirect type of influence on KV. Then we're going to take a look at a few dynos that we've done and capture those values right off of the dyno run. And then what I'd like to do is show you exactly how I deal with this value of the KV not being so constant. So let's get started and talk about what is happening when we actually start to apply a load to our brushless motor. So one thing that you do know is that KV KV does in fact represent the unloaded RPM of a brushless motor. You can take the KV value, multiply it by the voltage that you intend to run that motor on, and this is going to give you the unloaded amount of RPM. Now, this is where things start to become a little bit different. Once you begin to load your brushless motor, there's a couple different things happening there. The first thing that you have to identify is that your LiPo battery or whatever battery that you happen to use in this radio control vehicle is being loaded and as such, it's going to end up outputting a lower amount of voltage. When you get a lower amount of voltage, you're not gonna have the same output RPM. We don't want to confuse this with the KV value being different. You load up your system, and that voltage is not going to get you an equal amount of RPM as to what you would expect if you ended up running calculations based off of a certain voltage that you're not actually hitting any longer. So that's kind of the indirect component of load as you apply it to a brushless motor as it relates to the output speed of that motor. Now the second thing that's happening here is your brushless motor is not actually gonna deliver the exact KV that you have calculated or determined or looking at from a spec point of view on a spec sheet from a manufacturer. What's gonna happen there is that KV is is actually going to be lower than its spec value and it's essentially based off of the load that you are applying to it. Now this is what we can do. We can take a look at this chart here and this chart represents several motors. I have a sheet in front of me that I can read off but here I'll put it right on the screen the chart itself and I tested a few different motors and many more than this as well. This comes from a torque video that we did. I'm using the exact same data set because it has everything done there in the chart. What I've done here is I've highlighted in green the couple parameters that we're going to be looking at here in this video and the very last row of data here describes the actual maximum current spec for that brushless motor. This is what the motor is saying is the maximum amount of current that you should actually pull from this motor. Now I have three motors that we're actually testing. Two of them are outrunners and one of them is the exact same in runner motor. And it doesn't necessarily matter what kind of type the motor is relative to in runner versus outrunner. Now if you take a look at the outrunner A, this is the first two columns here, we have an apparent KV of 985 and we know that this motor is of a 1050 KV motor. That's told to us right there in the very first row underneath outrunner A. Now if you look at the percentage of specification KV, so this is where we take the apparent KV and we divide it by the actual um, KV that's been specced here for us, we're getting about 94%. And then we want to take a look at the measured amount of current. The measured amount of current comes in at about 28 amps, and we relate this to the maximum current specification for this specific motor, and it comes out to 50 amps. So we're about, let's say, halfway there towards our actual 
amount of current that this motor is rated for. If you look at Outrunner A and the second time that we've done this, what we did is now we're up, jumping up to a different battery. So we're applying a much greater load to this motor and now we're pushing the current up to 52.64 amps. So over the 50 amps that this motor is rated for. And you can see when you do that, the percentage of the spec value there goes down to about 86%. You look at Outrunner B and we have a very similar thing happening there where we have a moderate amount of load. You've got 15 amps there and we got a max spec of around 38 amps giving us a percentage there of 91%. So we're getting 91% of the rated KV out at that exact load. And then we have the in-runner C. This is the very last motor that we ended up testing in that torque video. And we're seeing that the apparent KV is dropping down from 82% down to about 79%. Not a significant difference, but the only thing that we've actually changed is we're using a battery that has a higher amount of voltage. Even though nothing else in the system has changed. This is important and one of the reasons why I took this data set because this data set shows us that a very subtle change actually makes a difference in the expected amount of KV that you can get. And one of the things that does jump up is you go from 37.9A, so essentially 38 amps up to about 42 amps of current. Makes a very subtle difference there in terms of the current draw, but it does push that percent of spec KV from 82% down to 79%. Now it's what's important to note here is that the actual maximum current spec, this is supposed to be somewhat of a continuous current spec, is 28 amps. We're pushing that up to 38 amps, which is a considerable amount over that rated specification. So what I am seeing as a result here, and not just this data set, but every single data set that I've looked at, is as you load that motor more significantly, you are getting a lower amount of RPM out. Now what's important to know here is that this does change dependent on how much of a load you're actually applying. And if you look at this very simplistically as to what we're actually doing here, we're only dealing with the reality of things and seeing the actual amount of current that we're getting out of these systems, it does have a significant relationship between the amount of current that we're going to push through the motor and the amount of current that this motor is actually rated for. Now, we're not gonna get into the very deep details of exactly what's going on within this brushless motor. That becomes a little bit complicated and there's lots of factors that come into play in just that alone. And if you wanna simplify it, even look at the maximum current specification of a brushless motor. This can be a very ambiguous number. You don't know exactly how a manufacturer came up with this. They can have their own criteria that they're measuring up against, which is totally different than what you're actually using that motor in, the type of environment there. This is why it has been quite difficult for me to actually apply a specification based off of a formula or calculation in order to get this exact amount. Now what I've done here, I'd like to show you the Patreon RC calc sheet. This is a calc sheet that you can see if you are a member of the paid version of the Patreon site there. I'll leave a link in the description below if you want to check it out. If not, that's okay. We're gonna look at this here in this video. So in this spreadsheet, what I've done is I've pretty well set up an area where we can deal with this KV difference. Now, depending on how hard or aggressively we're loading our brushless motor within our radio control vehicle, we can change the percentage there of what we would expect. As you can see here on this sheet, I've provided a chart which gives you a range of values that you're able to use for brushless motor load. Now what you wanna do is you wanna understand how hard you're pushing your brushless motor as it relates to that sort of maximum amount of current. Another way to really represent this is to look at the amount of heat that your brushless motor is getting up to. If you have a motor that's getting quite hot within the first minute of running, then your percentage that you're gonna use is near the higher end of this range. If you have a motor that is staying completely cool, then you're probably gonna have a percentage at the very bottom of this range. This is about as simple as I can get this formula right now. This small calculation comes in handy quite significantly, allows us to get a more accurate representation for speed run vehicles, or just to understand a general radio control car, how fast it is able to travel there with your specific setup also placed right into this calculator. Once you have the percentage load there figured out, you use that value in your calculation, and this is going to help you calculate that top speed for your specific setup. 
Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, like the video if you do, and don't forget to hit that sub button so that I can catch you guys in that next video. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next one.